What's up guys, HCG here, welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. Today we have one of the new decks that are going to make a big impact in the metagame with the release of Cyberstorm Access. Super Heavy Samurai got really really good support and now with the combination of all the cards that the, card, that the deck had beforehand that they were individually okay but they didn't really have the cohesiveness in order to work as a deck but now with these new cards the deck is really really powerful. It has a lot of one card combo starters that can lead into really big boards. The deck can play a lot of really good cards that are searchable like Regulus and other cards that can end in negates. And because the deck inherently doesn't play any spells and traps, because if you have any spells and traps in your graveyard, you basically lose half your effects, it has a lot of room to play a lot of going second cards, like hand traps and anything else you need, so it can adapt to any given format in order to be able to combat the rest of the deck. So we're talking about a really, really good deck right here, and I'm going to show you the list that I've come up with. Of course, it's still very, very early to tell what the best build of this deck is going to be, because there are going to be a lot of very iterations. There are other builds in the OCG that have been more like a earth good stuff type of deck but I feel like in the TCG that's a little bit difficult to do because of a lack of grass and of course block dragon so I'm leaning more toward the pure version being better but of course we're gonna have to wait and see what builds are going to top more so before we begin with the video if you enjoyed give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you don't miss upcoming content and now let's get to the deck profile so starting off with the monsters we have three copies of super heavy samurai prodigy wakoshi this is one of the new cards that we got in cyberstorm access and it has a really good effect so its pendulum effect is that if you have no spells and traps in your graveyard you can place a super heavy samurai pendulum monster from your deck in your other pendulum zone and then you special summon this card from your pendulum zone so the pendulum effect is the main thing you want to be looking for with this card because the deck even though it did have some really good pendulum cards before the card that we got right now is the card that you want to be playing because it's just so powerful we're going to talk about it a little bit later and it has a monster effect that it doesn't come up too often but there will be some scenarios where you're going to need it so if you have no spells and traps in your graveyard you can discard a monster to special summon a super heavy monster from your hand or deck the thing is, that's a really good effect, but it locks you into super heavies for the rest of the turn. So this card is something that you want to be using its pendulum effect pretty much every single game. And its monster effect is when you want to be summoning only your super heavy samurai monsters because maybe your opponent disrupted your original plays or you know that you're going to for game with train so you can use its effect pop cards. You do play some super heavy samurai monsters, specifically two synchro monsters and of course the link monster. But again, the main focus of the deck is summoning cards like Baron, like Appaloosa and stuff like that and Regulus. So you don't really want to end on super heavy samurai monsters especially going first so this effect is going to come up sometimes but the first effect is the main thing of this card we have two copies of super heavy samurai monk big benkei this is the pendulum monster you want to be placing in your pendulum zone with the effect of wakaushi so this card if you control a super heavy samurai monster you can add a super heavy samurai soul from your deck to your hand and because wakaushi's effect it summons itself to the field after you get big benkei on your scale so you're always going to have something on the field in order to resolve this effect so you're going to get your souls this way it also has a monster effect so if you have no spells and traps in your graveyard you can send a super heavy summon like big benkei from your hand deck to the graveyard you can special summon this card from your hand big benkei i don't really feel like it's a card you really want to be playing in the deck maybe you can run away with playing just one copy if you want to play more copies of monk big benkei in order to be able to special summon it in case you draw it because there will be some times where you're going to draw multiple copies of this card and maybe you want to be able to summon this from your hand but again i don't feel like big benkei is a card that's worth playing for something like this in order to make an extender so yeah i feel like just using this card for its pendulum effect is what you really want. We have three copies of Super Heavy Samurai Motorbike. This is another one of the new cards that we got in Cyberstorm Access. So if you have no spells and traps in your graveyard, you can discard this card to add a Super Heavy Samurai monster from your deck to your hand. And yeah, this is pretty much a card that you can use to search all your starters. It also has another effect that once per turn you can target a machine monster you control to increase its level by two. So it can sometimes make some of your awkward levels a little bit better because you do have a lot of level ones in the deck and sometimes you want to go for a level eight synchro or maybe a level 10 synchro and depends on what you have on the feel this effect come up to basically give you a better combo in order to be able to get the monsters you want with the monsters you have on the field. Now let's move on to some of the older cards. The deck did have some really good cards before, it's just that they didn't have anything really good to search. But now that we have the tools to be able to make a good board, we also have some old starters. So first we have three copies of Super Heavy Samurai Wagon. This is a card that upon summon, you change its battle position and then if you have no spells and traps in the grave and its card is in defense position, you can switch it to attack mode and then you add a Super Heavy Samurai Soul from your deck to your hands. So this card on its own, you normal summon it, it switches to defense, you use its effect, you switch it to attack, and you search. So basically, basically a simple card that can search any of your super heavy samurai souls. And the card you want to be searching most of the time if you don't already have it is one of the three copies of super heavy samurai soul piercer. This is another card that can be act as a starter, so you can target a super heavy samurai monster you control, you equip it to the card, and then it gives it piercing damage, which it doesn't matter too much unless you're in a late game situation where you're grinding with one of your super heavy samurai, maybe synchro monsters. But the effect you really care about is 
that if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a super heavy samurai monster from your deck to your hand. So you can either equip this card to something you already have, most likely it's going to be a wagon because you searched it with a wagon, or you can just normal summon it and then link it away for your super heavy samurai scarecrow, your link monster, and in both scenarios it's going to give you a search, so it's another really good card. So with this card, with wagon, with your motorbike and your wakaushi, you have 12 one card starters that can give you access to basically your entire deck. So this deck is super consistent and the boards it's gonna make are nothing to laugh at either. Of course they are not something like super crazy like locking nine zones with your Castira deck or bringing out seven interruptions with sprite within sprite and adventure decks but again it's a deck that is going to do its job basically every single game which is really good especially in the format of a really big event you want to, your deck to be as consistent as possible and this deck is going to get the job done. So now let's move on to some of the one-offs that you play because the deck does have a lot of searchers but let's see exactly what the deck can search in order to make boards. So first we have one copy of Super Heavy Samurai Stealthy. If you have no spells and traps in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. And it's a quick effect, you can tribute it to target a spell and trap card in your opponent's graveyard and set it to your field. So this card can steal some staples, in case you want them, and it's another level 1 extender that you can just special summon from the hand. So it's an all-around decent card. You do play a lot of those one-offs that you don't really mind drawing, but they're mostly searchable so you can be able to use them whenever you need, because there will be some hands where you need them, and some other cards when you need some of the other ones. We play one copy of Super Heavy Samurai Solgaia Booster. This is a card that you can target a Super Heavy Samurai Monster you control you equip it this card from your hand or your field to that monster it's treated as a tuner so it may be in the hand where you don't have a tuner when you don't have your motorbike you can use this card to give yourself a tuner and not be able to go into baron and also if you have no spells and traps in your graveyard and this card was equipped to a monster by its effect you can special summon this with being equipped so it's another level four monster you can summon which can give you access to rank four synchro exes monsters because the deck does have some access to really good monsters especially sargas because by summoning sargas means you can summon you can search your regulus and the deck is a whole bunch of machines so it's very easy to get one in the graveyard to equip with Regulus to get another interruption on the board. We have one copy of Super Heavy Samurai Soul Horns. This is another card that you can equip with this card from your hand or side of the field. One of your Super Heavies, it gives it a second attack. And again, it's another card that you can special summon while it is up to a monster. So another level one extender that can give extra effects to your big boss monsters in the extra deck and also give you an extender whenever you need. We have one copy of Super Heavy Samurai Soul Peacemaker. This is a card that again, you can equip from your hand or field one of your Super Heavies. This card, while equipped to a monster, your opponent can, can monsters can only attack that monster and you can tribute this card with a monster equipped to it to special summon a super heavy from your deck. So when you have one of those level 1 extenders on your field that they don't really do anything, maybe you don't really need for a synchro, you can equip this card to them and then you can summon one of your level 4 monsters from your deck to go for an Xyz or a tuner from your deck to go for a sync. And the last super heavy samurai monster in the main deck is one copy of super heavy samurai scales. This is the only level 4 monster that you're going to be summoning from the deck because you can be able to use its effect to revive another monster. So if your opponent controls two more monsters and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. So going second, this card is not really terrible to draw because you can use it as an extender. And when this card is summoned, you can target level 4 lower super hero summoner monster in the graveyard and you special summon it in defense. So yeah, this card can give you access to basically your entire graveyard. Again, you mainly want to be summoning level 4s with this card back, so you can go for cards like Sargas, Gigant, or even Abyss Dweller. And yeah, it's a really good revival effect that can be used as an extender going second. We have one copy of Theory and King Rangulus, of course. In a deck like this, where we play so many machines and a rank 4 toolbox, being able to go into our Sprigan monster and then go into Sargas means that we'll be able to search this card and then summon it very freely. So yeah, it's a really good addition as a one-off in the deck. We play one copy of Ancient Gear Box. The reason we're playing this card is so we can search the next card. You can search this card with the Ancient Gear Link Monster with Ballista, and then you can use its effect to search your one copy of Infinite Track Tunneler, which Tunneler is a card that can help you basically keep momentum, because this is a deck that can use all of its resources very, very quickly. So if you don't have Tunneler in your deck and your opponent manages to crack your board, it's very difficult to come back. But with Tunneler, not only can you recycle your one -off, by putting them back into the deck, but you can also draw two cards to have follow-up, so I feel like it's a really good tech play in the deck. Of course, if you don't want to play these cards, you feel like you don't need them, then you can play the Cyberstein package, so you can go into cards like Exterior. I'm not really playing that in this particular build, but of course it's something you can experiment with, because it's something that can win you games outright. Exterior is really good, but I feel like the deck already has the tools to make some really good monsters without it, so playing cards like Box and Tunneler to make sure you don't insta-lose to something that is going to break your board is better, in my opinion. Now, these 22 cards are the main core of the deck, so the rest of the 18 cards basically you can be they can be whatever you want you can play like 18 hand traps if you feel like but i feel like if you play just hand traps then you're missing out on some other really good cards that can help you crack boards going second and play around basically unwinnable situations so let's start with the first card that i feel like it's the most important piece in the deck which is three copies of archfin eccentric so this deck has basically a loose button against the card called performer pal rainbow five rainbow magician so magician is a card that against this particular deck is basically mystic mind so it's a scale that says that depending on how many 
many set cards a player has, they get an additional effect. So if you have four or more, it basically doubles all your attack. But the thing you care about more is that if you have zero, you basically get Mystic Mind. You cannot activate monster effects and you cannot attack them. And this deck cannot play spells and traps. I mean, maybe you can play Clockwork Knight because it's a card that is going to banish itself from the graveyard to give you a search in case it hits the graveyard so you don't clock your effects. But again, it's something that it doesn't do much unless it hits the graveyard. And playing it just to set it under your under the Magician, it just doesn't feel great. So playing Eccentric, not only does it give you an out to this card, but it also gives you an out to Skill Drain. And Skill Drain kills this deck. You cannot play under Skill Drain. So if you're going against Labyrinth, then you're going to have a hard time if you open Skill Drain. So you're going to see that not only do we have this card to add Skill Drain, but there's also basically a combo with the extra deck you can use to add Skill Drain with one of your hand traps. But yeah, I feel like Eccentric is really good in that. And also it can deal with monsters. So for example, maybe your opponent has summoned a Vanity's Fiend on you. You can just normal summon Archfiend Eccentric, use her effect, pop the Vanities, and you're able to play. So this card gives you so much freedom against those matchups that you otherwise lose immediately. So I feel like it's really good to main deck at three. We play three copies of Kumongos. I feel like a Kaiju just gives you more options than just another hand trap because there are only so many hand traps you can play that are going to have an impact in pretty much every single ma matchup because a card like Nibiru, with a deck like this being relevant in the following format, it's going to lose a popularity. We're going to talk about why once I get to the extra deck, but again, I don't feel like Nibiru is going to be worth maining in the following format, so I feel like playing Kaiju means that you can just at least deal with your opponent's Baron or something problematic they have on the field to be able to trade one for one and not have to play around and negate. Because the deck does have one card starters, so it's not like you need all six cards in your hand going second in order to be a combo, so you don't really mind negging one for a Kaiju to be able to play around interruption. Now, the rest of the cards are hand traps because I feel like these are the ones that are going to be the most relevant in the most matchups. So first we have three copies of Ash Blossom, of course, she's a most generic hand trap. You're going to be using her pretty much in every single situation. I can't think of a matchup where Ash is going to be completely dead. We have three copies of Effect Veiler. Again, unfortunately, no spells and traps means no Imperm, so we have to play the lesser version. But Veiler is not that terrible. It's a good card that you can use in pretty much every matchup, except maybe Labyrinth, but even then you can hit Ariana or something. We have three copies of Droll and Lockbird, which is a card that is going to see a lot more play now, because especially because of Super Heavy, because the deck does add a lot. It does have a lot of cards that can add other cards. So yeah, Droll and Lockbird can basically end their turns if they don't have enough extenders in their hand already. And we have three copies of Ghost Ogre. Now, even though Ghost Ogre, on her own, it's not like the greatest hand trap, she does have a really good niche interaction with one of the cards in the extra deck that lets you out skill drain. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to out a flight gate like this because you're not able to play under skill drain. So being able to have three eccentrics and three ghost ogres in combo with one of your synchro monsters that can deal with kill drain means that you're going to have good chances of being able to play around a card like this. Now let's move on to the extra deck. So let's start with the super heavy samurai synchro monsters. These are the ones that you will be able to summon even though you might sometimes get you be able to use your Wakaoshi's effect. So the first one is Super Heavy Samurai Ninja Sarutobi. So yeah, this card is a level 8 synchro monster that has an effect that, of course, I forgot to mention that Super Heavies, most of the monsters, they have the effect that they can attack while in face-up defense position by using their defense as their attack. It's something that it has been the gimmick of the deck for pretty much ever since its release. I forgot to mention that once I was talking about the monsters. So, but yeah, this card has that effect too. But the effect you really care about is that once per turn, either during either player's turn, if you have no spells and traps in your graveyard, you can target a spell and trap on the field and destroy it and you inflict 500 damage to your opponent. So first of all, this is why I said Ghost Ogre is a good card because under Skill Drain, you can activate this effect and then chain Ghost Ogre on your own Sarutobi. And since it's no longer on the field, it's going to resolve to get rid of the Skill Drain. So that's the interaction I was talking about, be able to deal with Skill Drain. But also this card can win you games in time, which is why I value this card over Tornado Dragon. You're going to see lists that are going to be playing Tornado Dragon over this card. And even though I can see the point because Tornado Dragon is a card that can activate Sargas' effect during your opponent's turn, but there are other rank 4 Xyz monsters that can do the same thing in certain matchups, and I feel like this card burning into time can sometimes be very important because, again, we're in a meta that a lot of decks do have ways to deal burn damage in order to win in time, so if your deck can do that, you automatically have an edge on top of the other decks that cannot do that, so yeah, this is a card that can do it in this particular deck, so we might as well use it. We have one copy of Super Heavy Samurai Steam Train King. This is the big boss monster of the deck. It's not really the big boss monster, but you get my point. It's a card. It was meant to be summoned as quickly as possible in this particular archetype, but again, there are way better options. But if you activate Wakaoshi's effect, and in some situations you will be forced to, especially when you get hand drop down to death, so this is a card that you are mostly looking at to be able to go for a push. So it's a really big card. It has 4,800 defense that it can use as an attack because it attacks while in defense, of course. And once per turn, you can discard up two cards, target that many cards on your opponent's field, you destroy them, and once per turn, it has an effect that you can banish all spells and traps in the grave to burn for 200 for each. So this card was the out in case you wanted to play spells and traps, but again, I just don't feel like it's worth it, even though you do have a way to.
to banish them. You're not going to be summoning this card very often, so you might as well not run any spells on Trap Seek regardless. You use this effect for its destruction effect and for its big body. You're not going to be summoning it very often, but if your opponent has a lot of interruptions and you're forced to use Wakaoshi's effect, this is the best card you can bring. For the generics, we have one copy of Baron the Floor, which is a card you're aiming to summon pretty much every single turn. It's the monster that you can summon very, very easily, and because of a new card that we got, this card is not only more easy to summon, but also makes Nibiru kinda dead, especially against this matchup. So, the card I'm talking about is Axel Synchro Stardust Dragon. So, this is a card that when your opponent Nibiru's you, you can chain its effect, and you summon a Stardust from the extra deck, and then you immediately Synchro Summon, and the monster you summon becomes unaffected. And because this card summons a level 2 or lower tuner from your graveyard the moment it is summoned, you're going to have your motorbike on the field, which means 2 plus 8 with Stardust means a Baron that it cannot be affected by Nibiru. So this is why I said that Nibiru is not going to be that good of a card, especially in the main deck moving forward. Side deck it's still going to be worth, definitely. But against a deck like this, Nibiru, if your opponent knows what they're doing, it's not going to do much. We have one copy of Stardust Dragon, mainly for, of course, to be able to summon it with Excel Synchro. For the Xyz monsters, we have one copy of Swing as Merrymaker. This is a card you're going to be using as a stepping stone in order to go into your one copy of Gigantic Champion Sargas in order to be able to search your Therian King Regulus. We play one copy of Gear Gigant X to be able to search level 3 or level 4 lower machine monsters from our deck to our graveyard to our hand. This card can give you access to your entire deck, so if you can go for rank 4, this card can basically give you free range for your entire deck. Sometimes you can even search Box to be able to go into Tunneler, but most of the time Box is going to be the one you're going to be searching with your Ballista. We play one copy of Abyss Dweller. Even though this card does lose popularity because we are not longer in a Shizu tier type format, there will be some matchups where this card is really good, and this card has really good synergy with Sargas as well, because Sargas has an effect that when you detach a material from an Xyz monster, you can target a card on the field, and either you destroy it or return it to the hand. So if you can use Dweller's effect during your opponent's turn, while you have Sargas on the field, you're able to basically get a 2 for 1. You floodgate your opponent, and you also deal with the card. We have one copy of Zeus, because we do play Xyz monsters, so we might as well play Zeus, so if you will manage to land an attack with one of those, we can summon this card to clear our opponent's board. And for the Link monsters, we have two copies of Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow. This is the Link monster. This is not a new card. This this card has been out for quite some time. It's one of the newer supports, but not Cyberstorm Axis support. So this card is really powerful. It's just another Link 1 monster that a lot of decks, when they have a Link 1 monster, you know that they can do stuff. And this card needs any super heavy samurai monster. It cannot be used while Link material. And while you have no spells and traps in your graveyard, you take no battle damage from attacks involving this card. And if you have no spells and traps in the grave, you can discard a monster to target a super heavy in your grave. And you special summon into the zone discard points to in defense mode. So it can give you another extender to be able to go into others. We have one copy of Ancient Gear Ballista. This card card is a monster that you can summon for free because it needs earth machines, no ancient gear, so you can summon it very easily with a deck that every single monster is an earth machine, and it's a card that can search you an ancient gear or summon, so you can search your box, get your tunneler, tribute a monster to summon your tunneler, and once you lick it away, or basically do whatever with it, you can use its graveyard effect to be able to go to basically Bay Pot of Avarice. You just put five earth machines from your grave into the deck, and then you draw two cards, which is a recovery play I was talking about, which I feel like is very important in a deck like this, so you can sometimes have chance in a grind game. We play one copy of Clifford Genius. It's a card that going second can be decent by negating stuff. Its second effect is not going to come up because it's very difficult to basically summon twice at the same time at this card zones. But again, you mainly use it for its effect to negate a card on each side of the field. And we play one copy of Appaloosa. This card, along with Baron and Regulus, this is your main end board that you're looking for. And of course, it's very free in a deck that can spam so many monsters. It has a lot of extenders, so you can get this card with four interruptions very easily on top of a Baron and Regulus, backed up with some hand drops in your hand, and your opponent is not going to be able to do much. So yep. That's the deck, guys. Super heavy, really, really neat deck. A deck that hasn't seen the light of day ever since it's released, pretty much. But now, with these new cards, it's going to become a really relevant meta deck. So be on the lookout for this deck. A lot of people, especially at the beginning of the new format after the release of the set, they're going to be trying out. So you're going to see a lot of these decks flying around. So we're going to have to wait and see exactly the splash that this deck is going to do in top cuts and see if it's going to be just as relevant as it is in the OC. So yep, that's the deck, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss up coming content and we'll see you next time.